everyone, it's, oh, I'm just looking at my time. Okay. Hey everyone, it's me, Christina, again. Um, as you can tell, I'm still in the hospital. I'm in the heart transplant intensive care unit. Um, it is 1.27 a.m. and it is October 6, 2010. I'd like to give you um, a small update. I had uh, yesterday, which would be, yeah, would have been yesterday, um, October 5th, actually, um, which is, still feels like today. But I had a procedure done in the OR. I don't know if you can, you can see this or not, but um, they had to put a new um, catheter in my neck. Um, it's right here, uh, so I can do dialysis, and the reason why they took the old catheter out is because it was infected, so they're going to keep this temporary catheter in until the old infection goes away, and while I'm here in the hospital, they're going to give me IV antibiotics. What the IV antibiotics is called Vanco. And the, with the infection that I have, which is MRSA, well, a, lot of, a lot of transplant patients like myself have very low immune systems, so our immune systems are compromised, which means we can get uh, MRSA or any kind of staph or anything, any kind of infection, cold, you, you name it. We can get it a lot easier, and it could get seriously ill. We can get seriously ill from it. But as if I was a healthy person with a good immune system, I could get a cold and a few days later take medicine and it'd be completely gone. But that's not my case. I can get a simple cold and later than down the road, a few days later, I can turn up with pneumonia and then wind up in the hospital again. But today, like I said, I went into the OR. I went in about 3 o'clock in the evening. Um, I finally got back in my room about... 6 o'clock, maybe 7, a little, little bit sooner than that. Um, everything went good. They um, gave me some la la medicine, some first aid, and, and they lauded, and you know, the good stuff that goes in the IV to make you calm down. Um, uh, I feel a little bit better today, but the only issue I have today is the pain. I'm in a lot of pain. So they're giving me, um, they lauded one milligram every six hours and they're also giving me uh, lower tab every four hours <sighs> um, I guess the plan now right now is that we're going to try to treat my antibiotic treat my infection with these antibiotics uh, and the doctor said that I gotta stay in the hospital until we do get this uh, infection under control. Um, and when that happens, and my cultures come back negative, and there are no more infection, then they're gonna go ahead and take this per this temporary perm cath that they just put in, they're gonna go ahead and take it out, and they'll put a more, a more um, excuse me, they'll put a more permanent one in, so I can go home and live my normal life, you know, as a dialysis patient. But we really can't tell, you know, how long it's going to take or any of that. So I have been here, I think I got here um, Friday. And it is it, actually now it's Wednesday. So I'm going to have dialysis today. And we're going to see how my new perm cath, the temporary perm cath, works. If it works okay, then great. But if it don't, then, you know, we we'll obviously have to go back to the OR. Um, my IV right here, tomorrow, I've got to take it out, put anyone in because it's out of date. The IV quit, you know, it quit pulling blood, but I can still get medicine through it. Um... Over time, I will continue to give updates while I'm here, just, you know, because I know a lot of my family is upset because I haven't been calling them and giving them updates. And my, but, you know, it's not because 
I'm trying to ignore them, really. You know, I've been kind of weak. And with this infection, since it's in my blood system, it does make me weak. Um, I have been getting up out of bed, and I try to walk a few laps around the unit. But the only issue I'm having is, is I can't sleep at night. It's just I'm wide awake at night. With all the IV drugs I've been had, I should have been asleep a long time ago. Um, but right now, we're just playing it by ear to see how things go. Uh, I really do miss Joe. I really wish I could go home and spend time with him. I kind of did another today. What I did is I found a place online. I brought my laptop and I looked up for someone that would deliver me some food um, so I could actually have some hospital food that's not hospital food. And I called into this pizzeria place and they brought me this it was expensive, and, and, you know, it was good, but it wasn't worth the amount I paid. So, needless to say, I'm not going there anymore. I have, next time I'll probably go, you know, order steak out or something like that. But, um, because, um, I was NPO, in which that means nothing by mouth. And if you're NPO and you got to have surgery in the mornings, you can only have a little bit of drink to take your medicine. And with me being a diabetic, they had to put me on a pump to slowly give me some sugar water so I wouldn't, you know, my sugar wouldn't go too low. But I did not get one tray today. So I finally just got fed up with it and, and I ordered from somewhere else and they brought the food to me and I ate it. Needless to say, I'm still hungry. Yes, I'm a tiny girl and I only weigh 100 pounds, but I can put down some food and I'm not afraid to have people watch me eat, you know. But um, I'm also going to be taking a lot of photos and I'm going to be posting these uh, photos on my Facebook page. I'm trying to show you, you know, my progress and every day how everything is and the only thing I'm really, the only reason I'm kind of calm now and I'm not crying is because, you know, I had a lot of pain medicine, but it's, uh, 1.30 in the morning now, so about 3 o'clock, I should be able to get some more pain medicine. Hopefully I'll fall asleep then, but then they're going to wake me up again early at 6 o'clock, 7 o'clock to make me go to dialysis, so, you know, it's when one situation, sometimes you get sleep here in the hospital and sometimes, you know, you don't. But I guess that's the name of the game. Um, I will try to get what, back with you guys and make another video tomorrow. I'm not very positive if I'll be able to, just depending on how my dialysis treatment goes and, and everything like that. Um, and I guess uh, I'm going to let you go now. But if, let me ask you one more thing before I let you go. If you had enough time to watch this video, will you please do me a favor? After you get done watching this video, I want you to get on your computer. Type in www.com taylorsgift.com and on that website it shows you the tor story of Taylor Swift I'm sorry Taylor's Storch there you go Taylor Storch's story and how she passed away and how she donated her organs and how many people she saved you know while donating those organs again I, I remind you it's taylorsgift.org and please if I mean anything to you or you have any loved ones I need you to go on that site and I need you to register to be an organ donor the reason I say this is because I've been ha I had two heart transplants myself and had it not been for the people that donated their organs I wouldn't be here today.
my heart would not be pumping. I would have died at two years old because I had my first heart transplant, heart transplant at two. So, you can be a living donor if you want to donate a kidney. But otherwise, the other organs will not be taken from your body until you are clinically dead. But I'd also like to educate you on organ donation. So if anyone has any questions, please comment this video. And I will try, I will try my best to answer all of your questions. Um, and then, you know, later on down the road, um, maybe I'll, I'll help and inspire somebody with my story and I can actually get more and more people to become an organ donor. Alright, I guess I'll let you go and I will talk to you all later. You have sweet, dream, sweet dreams and remember I gave you that chore, that homework. Go to taylorsgift.org, look through her story, and you go on her website, and you please, I am begging you, please register to be an organ donor. Thank you. Have a good night. Bye-bye.